custom properties and drivers are very useful, but they can be a bit scary for beginners. Let's understand how to properly create them and use them in this video. In this video, I will explain you how custom properties work and how to use them. We will also see how to properly use them on the rig and how to get them to be displayed in the UI using a secret, very simple trick. Stay till the end of the video because I have a very special announcement for you. Let's get started. As you may already know, Blender objects are containers. And those containers have data including their transform channels and also specific data depending on the kind of object you've added to your scene. It can be mesh data, camera data, light data, and so on. Your scene, but also the world, the textures can have those specific data too, called data block. And those data block can be shared among different object, world, or scene. The most common data block we share are materials. It can be mesh data, for example, sphere mesh data. If I attach the sphere mesh data to the cube, it will become the sphere. And when editing one of the data, it will also edit the other since they are sharing the same data. And we can see that this mesh sphere data has two users. These are called data block and you can add a custom property to any data block in Blender. With a data block selected, in this case my cube object, I can add a custom property by clicking the add button. By default, a custom property has a floating value going from 0 to 1. Clicking the edit button will allow us to edit the custom property. You can change its value range through the min and max option. Setting it to 5 in the maximum value will allow me to push the value up to 5.0. You can change the property name and it will be displayed in your property panel. If you change the current and default property value to integers, then the custom property slider will also switch to display integers, which is very handy to create basic switches. I'm using Blender 292 Alpha, so there is this library override option, allowing you to edit linked data. The soft limit allows you to lock the slider range, not the value range. If I set the soft limit from 0 to 2, then using the slider, I will only be able to move from 0 to 2. But I can still enter the value I want by clicking the value and typing the value I want. Finally, the tooltip allows you to insert a quick description of what your custom property is doing. For example, change color. When I hover over the custom property, I can see what it does. And we can find our custom property in the item panel. Now you know everything about creating a custom property. Let's use it. We will now create a simple driver to be able to edit the color of our object using our custom property. First, I need to change my custom property behavior having a floating value from 0 to 1. So I just need to enter 0.0, .0 and 1.0 into the custom property default and current value. Now, to be able to use this custom property on the driver, I need to know its address. So I will right click on it and copy its data path. If I paste it in the document editor, you can see that it's very simple. It's just an item called color. The idea is to use this custom property to drive the U of our cube. Since it's a value that goes from 0 to 1, our custom property that goes from 0 to 1 should work well. But the issue is that right clicking on the U doesn't do anything. But if I right click onto the color here, I can add a driver. But when I want to see where the driver is, it's currently affecting the RGB channels. So including the alpha channel, I get four channels with a driver. That's not what we want. We want one driver on the U value and that's it. So I will right click and delete the driver. Since I can't access the U through the RGB input, we'll use a converter, combine U saturation and value. This way, I get a color node that exposed me those different channels. 
And if I change the saturation and the value to 1 and 0 0.9, I will find back a red color. Or I can go into my RGB node, copy and paste the value so that I have exactly the same color. Now changing the U value will change the color of my, of my cube material. So I can now right click on the U and add a driver. Since we will be using a simple value in type, I can choose average value. And as a source, I want to use a single property. I want to use the single property from our cube. From there, copy the data path of our custom property, edit our driver, and just paste this data path into the path. Now, our custom property drives the color of the cube. And this is how you create a driver using a custom property. So basically, this color option is just a value that goes from 0 to 1 and it's driving another value. So if I copy the driver by right clicking and choosing copy driver and paste it for example on the Z scale of the cube, then the custom property will also affect the Z scale of the cube. So now let's see how we can use those custom properties on a simple rig. In the 3D viewport, I will press Shift A and add an armature. For better understanding, I will go into the armature option. In the viewport display, I will display the name of my bone. And I will duplicate it so that we have different bones. Our armature is also an object, so it has object custom properties armature custom properties and bone custom properties. And we often use those custom properties to create more advanced mechanism like a forward and inverse kinematic switch. You can store your custom properties at the object level, but it's not user friendly since you can't access the custom property in the item panel while in pose mode, while animating your armature. So you would have to switch between pose and object mode all the time. So let's try to add this custom property at the armature data level. Well, it looks even worse because now I can't see this custom property while in pose mode nor while in object mode. And on top of this, if I want to animate this custom property, it won't be stored into the same action as my bone keyframes. We can see in the dope sheet that it's not in the same data block and when I enter the action editor, I can't find this armature property number two. So you should avoid using custom properties on the armature data block. So the best way to store your custom properties is to do it at the bone level. Not only will we be able to see them directly in the item panel while in pose mode, but also, if we keyframe them, they will be stored directly into the bone in the same action. That's awesome, as now those properties are part of the same animation in a way. But you may have seen that we have a properties panel and a rig properties panel here. And if I select another bone, I no longer see my properties. I need to select back the first bone that hold the properties. But if I rename this bone, pressing F2 properties with only capital characters, now the properties it holds will also be displayed in the rig properties tab. Whatever the bone I'm selecting, those custom properties will always be displayed, which is super handy. This way you can get all your character custom properties in your item panel while animating without writing a line of code. To finish this video, let's go just a little further with drivers and use a script expression. I've added a third bone on the top row and I will scale them down just for the ease of readability. We will duplicate the middle bone and make it smaller and we will rename this new bone MCH bone and we will parent our main bone to this MCH bone. So now our main bone is following the MCH bone in pose mode, but we can still move it freely as a child bone. Now I will add a copy transform constraint from each target bone onto this MCH bone. The MCH bone will snap onto its constraint bone and the main bone, which is its child, will follow. So let me just scale it a bit up for better readability. So if I add another copy transform from the third bone onto this one, 
the MCH bone is snapping from one copy transform to the other and the main bone is following, but you can still move it. So this is exactly the same principle as in my snapping equipment tutorial video. Let's focus on the first constraint. The idea is to use the custom property to drive the influence of the constraint. So I will go onto my property bone, add a new property. We can see it in the rig properties now and call it snap. I will switch the property value to 0 and 1 so that we have integers and our bone will jump from one constraint to the other. We'll increase the max range to 3 because we have 3 different bones, so each value will correspond to a bone. Right click on this custom prop and copy the data path. Now let's go onto our MCH bone, the one with the constraint, and on the influence right click and add the driver. We will use the script expression. For the time being, we don't care about this expression. Let's just set it as we do usually. We will use a single property, source our armature, and paste our data path. So now we are sourcing our snap custom property. I will right click on the driver and edit it again. The variable using the script expression is just what we have set. It's just a name, and the name output the current value of our snap custom properties. So I can name it as I want. A, snap, whatever. I will use A for the time being. So if in my script expression I tell Blender use A, it will simply use the snap value. And as soon as it is one or above, it will simply set the influence of the copy transform constraint to one. I can now right click on the driver, copy it and paste it on the other copy transform influence. Since our driver value is set to 1, it will set all the constraint to 1. And since the constraint are read in order, the very last copy transform will override all the others. What I'd like is to set the influence of the third copy transform to 1 whenever our snap custom property is set to 3. So I simply need to make my custom property value minus 2. So A minus 2. Now when my custom properties is set to 3, it will trigger the last copy transform. On the second driver, I just need to make A minus 1, so that the influence will be set to 1 whenever our snap value is 2. And that's it, we have created our custom snapping mechanism. And if you want to make it cleaner, or if you have to provide this to a customer or some other user, add some information in the tooltip, so that anyone can know what your custom property is doing simply by hovering over its value. So this is the end of this video and I have something more to say. I've been talking about it a lot before on Twitter and the time has come. I've started recording my new course a month ago. I'm currently working every day on it. It's the most ambitious course I've ever made. It will be an in-depth animation course covering the very basic of animation for the most beginners of you to advanced action character animation. Making this course take a lot of time, so it won't be available before the end of 2020. But be sure it will be a huge animation course entirely done in Blender. In in the meantime, stay tuned, subscribe for more tutorial about rigging, animation and whatever Blender can do, and I'll see you very very soon. Cheers!